Good day grade 12s, my name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student and I'd like to welcome you to Lesson 97 from the Distinction Bound Student Textbook written by Cardin Madzokir. This lesson concludes the topic Economic and Social Performance Indicators. As usual, we start off by revising homework activity 85 given in Lesson 96 linked down below. Question 1. Why do you think the poor find it difficult to escape poverty? For marks. The poorest people will also have less access to health, education, and other services. Some find it difficult to satisfy their basic needs or many people live beyond their means. Problems of hunger, malnutrition, and disease affect the poorest in society. The poorest are also typically marginalized or poverty trap or poverty cycle. No income or high unemployment levels. Lack of skills. Discrimination. Dependence on social grants. Question 2. Name any two indicators that form part of the Human Development Index. For marks. Life expectancy, real GDP per capita or income, adult literacy or education or school enrollment. That's it for our homework. Let us dive into the lesson for the day which is Unit 4, International Comparisons. Globalization started with international trade. Payments for trade have to be affected by using an exchanging rate. Exchange rates determine the actual amounts that are received and paid. With free floating exchange rates knowledge of a number of variables, such as interest rates and terms of trade, are also essential. The South African economy is increasingly involved in world markets through exports and imports. The high levels of uncertainty in the global environment in 2011 created volatile exchange rates. In the short term this volatility is likely to hold back higher growth. International Standardization Economic and social indicators are so important that international aid and funding organizations have specifications on how to compile them. The following are three important international organizations requiring members to standardize their indicators. The IMF. Its Manual on Government Finances Statistics focuses on public finance accounting. The World Bank. It provides definitions for a range of economic and social indicators which are collected and published in, among others. The World Development Report and African Development Indicators. The United Nations. The best known manual of economic indicators is the UN System of National Accounts, SNA. It focuses on production, income and expenditure, and how to avoid double counting. The data in the quarterly bulletin of the South African Reserve Bank is compiled in terms of the SNA specifications. Next up is interpretation of comparisons. With globalization, capital markets have been liberated. Capital goes where it can earn the best returns. Publications prepared for global operators give indicator values for three previous years and three years into the future so that underlying emerging trends can be spotted. International indicators include the key economic indicators discussed in this topic for key countries. Comparable indicators, plus auxiliary ones, such as PPI in addition to CPI, are added in respect of South Africa. Let us now compare South Africa internationally. Economic growth. South Africa is a developing country where a 3% growth rate is acceptable for a developing country, in terms of the World Bank a lower middle income country. Government abandoned anticyclical demand management in favor of structural reform in 1996 as guiding principle in fiscal policy. After the implementation of GEAR, 1996, the budget deficit reduced to less than 3% of the GDP accepted as benchmark, in line with international best practice. Government reduced deficit, limiting public debt, internationally acknowledged for exceptional fiscal. Discipline. Next is inflation. Inflation decreased continuously from 9% in 1994 to 3, 4% in 2005. The SARB dropped monetary targets and adopted inflation targets, initially in a 3% to 6% range. Interest rates, based on the repo rate, are the main instruments used in the stabilization policy. The consistently stable budget deficit also had a stabilizing effect on the inflation rate. Then we look at employment. Employment in the non-agricultural sector of the economy decreased. The GEAR strategy suggested that a climate was needed that was conducive to employment creation. By private sector. Private sector need to be more efficient to compete internationally. Labor productivity in the formal economy increased by 4, 2% per year over the 10-year period until 2005. And lastly exchange rate stability. The South African currency depreciated considerably between 1994 and 2002, from 2005 it appreciated. 
international reserves increased from 3% of GDP in 1994 to 18.7% in 2005. The SARB switched from managed floating to a free-floating exchange rate system. International benchmark, whether market forces determine rates, South Africa complies. As usual we conclude with homework activity 86 on page 208. Question 1. What is the accepted international benchmark for the budget deficit as a percentage of the gross domestic product? 2 marks. That's it for today's lesson. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound Student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and No Answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.